I love these kind of roles. I practice, you see me practice, and I'm my friends all the time. <laughs> I get to be a no-nonsense. I, you know, use a lot of different methods to get the information that I need. I usually like to pound it out of them. Yeah. But, uh, no, we, you know, I played a, I, I did, this is the third movie I've done in a row, and they've all been very different characters, and none of the other roles that I played leading up to this were, were very physical ones, so it was nice to kind of get back into the swing of that. Play a guy who, uh, who, who acts first and then thinks later. This, this stuff, shooting it can become tedious because, you know, you're doing it in such small pieces. But uh, the end result is going to be extremely satisfying. I like it. I, I prefer when I'm beating the crap out of somebody in a room. You know, that was fun the other night. You know, once you get into the physicality of it, it takes on a whole life of itself because there's so much, you know, energy and emotion that comes out in that. It, it, it's, you know, everything's ramped up very fast when someone starts beating the crap out of you and you, you, you know, are trying to continue on the same track. It was supposed to make the soldiers more aggressive in combat, but it was a disaster. The effects were uncontrollable. I have a uh, big background in sports. So, you know, a lot of football, baseball, basketball, a little bit of hockey, so, and, and a lot of boxing and uh, martial arts, so, yeah, it comes in handy. Get it! Let's go. I just, you know, I just try to make every moment that I'm in as real as possible, try to create that, you know. I, I don't spend time thinking about how I look, that's why I don't watch playback that much or dailies, you know. I don't rehearse in the mirror, say, oh, that look would be cool, you know, I just got, got one face, and, you know, just try to react accordingly, you know, become the character and, you know, be as real in that and create those moments as possible. It's something that just feels, it feels, it feels very natural to me. It makes sense. Um, I, it's something I don't, I'm not that conscious of, but I, I know that when in my daily life, I'm constantly putting myself in other people's shoes, and I like to mimic other people, and I like to uh, observe. I like to get into uh, the skin of someone else. And I like to be a different person. I like the, the fact that you can, you know, we can be so many different things, and, and I, like to, I like to be able to forget myself and not be concentrated on myself and be someone else. It's kind of a schizophrenic <laughs> thing, but I like it. If you ask me to play a role, I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna be that person. And I know that I have these emotions with, inside of me. It's just about bringing certain ones to the forefront. When I was little, I thought little people lived in the television. I loved doing it, but I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I loved playing different characters, but I didn't know why. I was always a pretty good liar as a kid. Even dumb, dumb things. I mean, not like major lies, but... I think that's helped me a little bit as an actor, because it's basic lying, isn't it? I mean, in a way, you just tore it down. It's just somebody telling you something and hope for, hoping that you believe it. In life, you're not going to go and be other persons, because in life, you're you. And then the only way to be someone else is to be an actor. Okay, how about a wing? How about, how about a leg? How about a leg? <laughs> it's good fellas. There's a head, too, here. and came to a sticky end, didn't she? How could that happen? We like to pretend we're afraid of certain things, or we like to, uh, you know, put on a face or act a certain way and sort of exaggerate our emotions, right? And that turns out, it turns out that those, that kind of behavior has a therapeutic effect on people. So we'll come out. Oh, I think that's a Sunday roast with pesto gravy and roast potatoes. We've got some shredded up bits and pieces if you want to, I don't know if you want any or not. For my last day turned out like, uh, yeah, let's uh, drape some of this. Okay. Sure, Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll set it and then I'll have it. Okay, then we'll go on after. Give me your biggest white sheet. Watch where you're standing. One footprint on the sheet, I'm fucked. Please. Very good. Yeah, I'm fascinated by uh, human by a human being and I'm fascinated by, by a human mind. I think it's it's amazing how every everyone is different. Every person is so different and it's so complex. You see that understanding in his eyes? Okay, hold it, okay? You're not done yet. And hold that look until you see that he has that the light has gone on. That he gets you. 
Okay? Uh, you know, sometimes you read a script and there's just something about it, or there's something in the character you think, I know that, I, I've been in that situation, I can relate to that, and you really want to, to do it. You know, it feels very natural and very comfortable to you. It's the fucking 15th round. You're in this corner. All right, you're doing his cuts. He's done, he's done. You gotta get his eye. Look at me. We're not done yet. Bing, bing, there goes the bell. This is what I truly love to do. This is what I know to do. This is what I can grow as a person doing. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, I'm okay. And set. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but you have to finish this. I think actors are quite sensitive people. I mean, you have to be in order to to be able to to play and to to you know, to get in someone else's personality, in someone else's head. Yes! 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 Don't worry, buddy. You got it. <laughs> you passed. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's not really about any of us, it's what they're doing, and we yeah. just help them. Just the life of, of an actor or the life of anyone in show business forces you to live your life in a way that um, is not consumed with security. Security can really hang you up, I think. I think change is only difficult when you try to deny it. And it's, you know, look at I mean, look at the seasons. Constant change. But it's sort of like a, it's not like things go away for good. You know, it's like a, like in, in American Indians, a spiral is a very important thing to them. Not just the circle, but the spiral. Because the spiral is always changing, but never ending. There's my customer. Oh, shit. <laughs> my number one customer. Good morning. Oh, shit. What's up, buddy? <laughs> no huggies on the camera. Oh, this is what we do. Where's the... Where's the thing? Like like it. It. What? She Dark took it. Thing. Where is it? She, she took it. it. So she's playing with it. In there? Yes. Now, this is how we get down. <laughs> I, can, I can make sure he's OK <laughs> while I'm working. And if it takes too long, that's it. <laughs> yeah. We have to be quick. Ten minutes, twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seventeen movies he's been performing for me. He's been doing his thing. And I just, I've never been a big fan of being in the makeup chair. I can know that Donald has great taste um, in material and also, you know, in acting and what rings true. So I always kind of look to him to see if he feels good about what we were doing, if it worked. You know, he's the one watching dailies, and he's the creative director of affairs. Uh, director of creative affairs. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, hey, 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 Mila, never touch the hand. No, no. This is not a game. This is not a game. We need this. No, I rent it $250 a day. Yeah, I'm from South Boston. Here's, here's South Boston here, and then you go right over the bridge is Dorchester. That's where I live, and Mark lives right over. I live in South Boston, Mark lives in Dorchester. It's so amazing what, what Mark has done, you know, because he kept everybody together, the, all the best guys, you know. He struggled with them and made it work, you know. He used to beat tough. me up when I was a kid. <laughs> but now, look at him, big boy. So what should we do? <laughs> boy. That's a long way down. Look up, big boy. <laughs> That's a long way down. All right, Phil, what's up now? I mean, we grew up in the same neighborhood, same neighborhood and, and we uh, can we, identify to the same thing. In a way, where we came from, it's great because we learned so much, you know? It, it's so good for us that we know that we know right or wrong now. These are all guys that Mark knew in, in childhood and, and from Dorchester. And really some great people who've been so kind to me that I, I would consider them all friends just because of, of MW. And yeah. if I needed anything, those guys would do anything for me. Now, they really would if I needed something or if I was in the streets of Dorchester. I think if I was in danger, I could call them. And they'd look out for me, and, and so would Mark. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for him. I met Mark on in 1994. 
or is it 93? 93, 94, we were doing a movie called Basketball Diaries. I was a director of a drug treatment program on the Lower East Side of New York called Sukasa. And I had received a phone call asking if they were having this kid named Jimmy Mario was having a hard time acting like a heroin addict. And I was a heroin addict for 17 years. On May 3rd, I just celebrated 24 years sober. And uh, he didn't know how to act like a heroin addict. So he came to me on a Wednesday. On a Thursday, he got the part. And then on Thursday afternoon, I got a phone call would I mind meeting with Leonardo DiCaprio, Scott Calvert, and Liz Heller. She was the producer, Scott was the director, and Leo was going to play Jim Carroll in Basketball Diaries. I had no problem. So I went to the office like really early in the morning. I met with Leo and Scott. They liked me very much because I knew all about Jim Carroll. I knew Jim. I used to get high with Jim. I did a lot of stuff with him. I, I used to work because I was in the music business. And when I worked for Patti Smith, Patti and Jim were very good friends. So it was just kind of real, a real, real coincidence that all of a sudden I got this offer to teach everybody how to act high for this movie, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you know, I worked with Leo for about a month and a half, and then they asked me to meet Mark. I met with Mark, and I did the same with him. And him and I just kind of hit it off in a really, in a way that, you know, it's hard to describe. He's from Boston, I'm from New York. He's a Red Sox fan, I'm a Yankee fan. Uh, it's, you know, and usually, there's usually a lot of whatever between the two. But we hit it off because we're both basically from the streets, come from a lot of a lot of similarities in certain ways, you know, our upbringing, our schooling, our non-schooling, whatever, you know, and and here we are, you know, 22 movies, 15 years later. Yeah, well, you know, people always ask, why from Boston, da, da, da. It's tough. I said everybody I know is tough. I don't think I'm tough. You know, that's just the way it was. My sisters fight, my brothers fight, getting into it's an argument, disagreement on the field or whatever. You might handle it that way, and then your friends after. It's all good. All right, Pippi? Yeah, man. Well, Pippi will tell you that I like to fight. <laughs> and I used no, to like I to like start. Fighting. I used to, you know, but that's how we were raised, and I, I don't do that no more. And you keep real because you're true to who you are. You know, you love yourself, you, you love, you know, you, 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 you're with your friends, you treat people a certain way, and you do certain things. You're not going to change because you're in this world. That's, hey, I mean, this is not going to change me. I, don't, I love who I am. Why would I want to change, you know? I'm so happy with what I've, what I've come to be, where I've, compared to where I've been in my life and where I am today, inside, spiritually, soulfully, whatever. I wouldn't change a thing. I spent most of my childhood being uh, exposed to smugglers, foreigners, and refugee camps. You know, 12, 14 families sharing one washroom, one kitchen. And every six to eight months, I had to make, uh, I had to accept the idea of being shifted around and not being able to make friends. And the f only friends I had that I can remember since I was a little boy, it was movies. Movies were my best friends. You know, I'll give you an example, like Rocky Balboa running in the streets in the cold, you know, and trying to make something out of himself. And films like that touched me a lot, to a point where I took the bus from Toronto to LA um, 10 years ago. And when I came to LA, I, I was kind of, punched in the face by reality. How are you doing, John? Terrible. In what way? Mental, physical? I woke up with the flu. I never get the flu. The devil took a giant shit See, on me. Francie. And the fact that you can't stop, you can't ring up and say, oh, I'm sick, can't come into work today. No. Oh, really? That'll be $300,000, please. Oh, yeah, we're halfway there, living on a prayer, aren't we? You know, we don't usually tend to work out while we're working. This wonderful makeup artist does his beautiful 
magic before I come in, so I can't dare move around or sweat or lay down or anything like that. I must protect the magic in which he has created. He keeps saying words like judge and the patinas. I gotta have those things. I like method and the madness. Get some music for the film. Wall to wall, Bon Jovi. Slippery when wet. With remixes, obviously. No, no, just as is from the, uh, the vinyl album. Max rocking out. Albert Finney movie, The Dresser. It's about an actor and his dresser. A symbiotic relationship between the actor and the person behind the actor. What do you mean? It's very James Joyce. <laughs> Once you've been in the business long enough, you realize that you don't have a job, that you've made a lifestyle choice. And anyone who's outside of the industry thinks it's just an incredible job. And it's not. It's a, it's a surreal and, and questionable lifestyle choice that you've undertaken. Guns are gonna be crazy. All these girls might be in trouble. This one, she's gonna get shot. Uh, the whole place is gonna get shot up. And the girls gonna get wet? The girls are gonna get wet. They're right over there, you yeah. see? It's gonna be good. Yeah. Are you ready, man? Pretty worried, man. Yeah. Probably as ready as I ever get. I'm gonna run across, and it's gonna be pouring rain, and all the other SWAT guys are gonna be shooting. It's gonna be chaos. I'm gonna run, jump from table to table as I'm shooting, chasing after uh, after Mark, and then at the end, uh, he gets a shot on my knee, blows it out, and uh, I do a big wipeout, crash into the table. FX is gonna blow it, and uh, yeah, take her to the ground. With the mask. Yeah, some guys have the mask. I'm gonna smell the gunpowder. I'm not concerned about the empty magazine. Exactly. Yeah. Boom, you know what's going out. And it's, you just did it perfectly without even looking at it. It's a feel thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. The other guys, they've earned it. To, they've took their hits in the past years, and now it's my turn. The, the young guys gotta come up and, and take their turn to get beat up on set. I started when I was six years old. I'm 19 now, so my dad's in the business. It's in the family. Our whole family's into it, you know. I got a younger brother, two younger sisters. My mom does some some work as well, so yeah. Do it. One little piece. Gonna run down there. Me and Brian is gonna stand here, and if he run past the mark, we'll stop him like a football tackle. Bang. Cheney. Yeah, he was Hollywood's first makeup man. Yeah, man with a thousand faces. What do you think? Back up now. We're done. I felt I was here for. <laughs> See what I got to deal with? Here we go. Diva. Here we go. Good. Eight-time Juno winner. I don't regret any any part of my childhood. And 
and growing up. And you know, I got friends of mine that are right now that are still in jail. You know, you know, because they ended up, you know, making that wrong decision. And that's all it takes is one wrong decision. And we all live together in the same neighborhood, so it's kind of like how the Bible was. You know, how everybody just was different race and different creed and. I think Dorchester was a lot of like that. You can't love anybody else if you don't love yourself. You can't spread love if you don't love yourself. And no matter what the, in the world, John Lennon said it, Bob Marley said it, the world, oh, if everyone has a little bit of love for everybody else, somebody else, this world would be a lot better place, you know? But a good film is, is about all of us. I mean, it's a classic moment where one person has an epiphany and a little bit of change in life and that's the basis of a great story in a movie. Why do you think we need stories like that? You mentioned epiphanies, but why, why do you think humans are Because so few of us have them along the way, and it would be nice to have more of them. <laughs> Sometimes films take a negative role on people. I have I've experienced knowing people that a movie like Scarface has ruined their life. But also, I watch Scarface and it helped me with my life. towards camera, we'll have Mila walk forward, holster your single shot, get ready on the machine gun, easy Mona, and all the time, brother, for you reaching for your inside piece. Easy Mona, easy Mona, and you spin around on her, and ba 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 boom Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not dead. He's not dead. Not dead. Yeah, <laughs> I look back and think it was probably the slickest operation, you know, it was a sort of we were full bore professional, right? But that strips away some of the fun. You know the way I, I like to go on location, but I wouldn't consider anywhere in North America or Canada. You wouldn't really think of that as location. Because it's all so familiar. Fair desert in a foreign language. I think my head's actually locked in this position. Yeah, it. It's been a long and great road of fun on this one. A lot of tricky things, and we're getting near the end. We're getting near the end, and I've learned a lot. I've experienced a lot. Keys, thank you. Um, it's been a great ride. It's, it's a John Moore film. I'm quite a melancholic person. I think melancholy drives me a lot in life. And it gives, it's, there's such a poise to it that it's just so beautiful. <laughs> I just can't do anything with myself. I'm, I just like it. I'm getting a little sad. In the movie, sad. I'm happy, sad. Glad we're finished, but distraught about having no function on Monday morning. And the bullets, watch the bullets, watch the gunfire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Looks like a finished Matrix post-production shot. Look at the shell! You fuck!